coming to our next session, uh, we have, uh, jumping back to our product management racket, we have uh, Mridul Udotholi. Uh, he's the Director of Mobility and Industrial Solutions at Mylin Foundry, a, DC, a DTC startup focused on improving human experiences by combining unstructured data and AI on the edge and using it to transform human experiences at the edge. So scaling deep tech products, what we will discuss is what are the lessons from marketing, uh, market analysis, and other functions that typically a product management companies use need to look at to rapidly scale their deep tech products in the market. So over to you, Mridul. Hi, thank you. Uh, hope you can see my screen and hear me loud and clear. Hmm. Yes. Thanks. Uh, thanks, Amul. So uh, thank you very much. I'm honored to be here uh, sharing my journey and experiences in the uh, world of deep tech products. And thank you for the warm introduction. So as we delve into the uh, world of deep tech products, I want to take you through a journey, uh, my journey through the highs and lows, the challenges, triumphs, and the and some of the lessons that I've learned along the way. So firstly, before I get started, let me share a concept that has been the guiding star. And I heard a lot of this uh, while I was backstage at this uh, session, that a successful product journey starts with an idea and is uh, driven and steered by the purpose. So it's the idea, the vision, and all the nice technical stuff that initiates the journey. Uh, but one thing that I would like to draw your attention to is that it's important to remember that uh, while we are driven by the idea, uh, we are governed by the value proposition. So this is one thing most often overlooked and overshadowed in the excitement of deep tech products because the product itself is that so exciting to build and deploy and so on. So deep tech products is not just about innovation. It's also about making that innovation useful, sustainable, and relevant. So it's about the GTM. So when you steer your journey, it's essential to keep a keen eye on the ecosystem, what's happening, where it's going, and also most importantly, the financial sustainability of the endeavor. So now the world of deep tech is a vast ocean. There are many topics, and I have had the privilege of riding a few waves, the IoT, i4.0, and the AI, edge AI, et cetera, et cetera. So each of these waves, um, they come with its own set of unique challenges and opportunities. Um, but I should, I should emphasize here that AI is not really a wave. AI is a new dimension uh, in most cases about uh, doing something new, uh, more efficiently, and uh, from a market perspective and from a company perspective, it's interesting to note that it impacts both the bottom line and the top line simultaneously. So let me take you through the story of uh, scaling deep tech in my last organization where I was responsible for GTM, and now at Mylan where I'm scaling the industrial and automotive business portfolio and uh, probably share some interesting lessons learned uh, through this uh, journey. So our journey uh, begins in the United Kingdom, where we were working with one of the largest retail chains in the nation. Uh, these guys, the retail folks, are masters of retail operations. Uh, but the realm of energy management in AI was alien to them. And the product that we were taking to market there was an edge AI energy monitoring solution uh, called Phantom. Uh, they knew the importance, uh, the retail folks, they knew the importance of energy efficiency. They had strong ESG initiatives going on, but simply were fumbling when it came to harnessing the power of technology and uh, looking at how it can impact their uh, bottom lines. So it was here that I learned the vital lesson that even giants in their own domains, large corporates can falter when faced with new technologies, especially deep tech, when it is not a part of their core value stream. For them, we had to then translate the complex world of AI-driven energy management into tangible benefits that resonated with their core operations, and hence making this uh, AI solution relatable. Then um, our journey then took us to the US, where it was even more interesting. Uh, where I encountered the largest uh, quick service restaurants, as they're called, the QSRs. So these guys are, again, masters of their operations, and uh, they also were, uh, energy was super important for them. Um, it was a walk in the park to create the first excitement, speaking to the senior leadership and getting the first product in there and so on. Um, the Edge AI deep tech product that worked non-intrusively, uh, did magical things uh, for improving the energy efficiency, uptime, and so on. So while we did a pilot store, the buy-in simply did not uh, get through as expected. 
So energy management as a product with AI simply did not make uh, make the cut at the CXO table. It was just another good to have solution. Uh, we then worked closer with the operations team and packaged this by closely coupling this into the restaurant's core operations. Now, the difference was that we were hitting the top line by providing predictive maintenance insights, ensuring the uptime of their operations, and also acting as a quantity reporting tech, replacing their manual reporting practices with the edge AI technologies. So you see, now what happened was that the buying center shifted. Uh, this product was affecting the core value stream. It was impacting the core value stream. And there was suddenly a strong interest in the organization. And unlike in the past, the decision makers yeah, are now well-defined and their metrics were defined too. And they simplified the uh, buying decision. Taking this story on to one of Asia's largest banks, where we had one of our largest uh, HAI uh, deployments, these guys, they knew the trade inside out. Um, and within the bank, we had a very strong sustainability ambassador who wanted the bank to benefit from deep tech. Now, here our journey was about, uh, you know, uh, more of education and guidance. So we had to walk alongside them hand in hand, explaining the intricacies of AI, intricacies of how the solution works and demonstrating how it could enhance their operations. So this chapter underscores the significance of a mentorship role in deep tech landscape that is often overlooked and the need to upskill the interface organization, which is ultimately going to use deep tech. Deep tech, of course, is interesting. It has a lot of potential, but to unlock the potential and to unleash it into the, into the core value streams to ultimately impact the top line, bottom line, you need that inter interface organization to you know function and use the product more. So um, further in our quest to scale the products, we discover the importance of financing models as well, because some of these products don't come cheap, especially in the UK. Some of these uh, deployments were highly capital intensive. We were looking at hundreds of stores uh, throughout the uh, European continent. So especially while scaling large geographies, it's important to look at um, various interesting ways to fund. So innovation in funding is also important to look at. And here we were prospectively funded by a green energy fund. So this was a game changer. And um, we realized that creativity in financing in deep tech is also as critical as innovation in the product. I'm sure a lot of the uh, startup founders would agree there as well. Now, moving on to my uh, journey here at Mylan. Uh, we are pioneers in creating deep tech products that run on the edge. In the automotive business vertical, we had done sufficient uh, work on creating products for driver monitoring and other HI solutions that work in a car. However, the end applications were typically in very expensive cars. So in the backdrop of numerous road accidents in India due to fatigue, drowsiness, uh, we were looking at how do we create uh, this cutting edge product out of India that is also uh, uh, accessible to everyone and uh, we said okay fine so if we need to deploy it across uh, the value stream here in India we have to put this on a device which most people possessed and that's a cell phone um, so we have had at Mylan in the past experience with uh, streaming and OTT upscaling uh, where we are live with more than 3 million uh, cell phones worldwide with our HAI solution but we have never put a algorithm as complex as driver monitoring into a cell phone uh, but we did it and uh, there were other challenges as well like tweaking um, you know adaptation to the skin tones lighting conditions road conditions detecting bicycles two wheelers so these were all the challenges which were solved but at the end of the day what we realized is it's super important to tailor the product to the market requirements uh, to the right price points so that there is adoption and adaptability uh, acceptance in the market so um, we put it on a cell phone, by the way, uh, in, at Mylan. Um, so here, um, I would like to uh, summarize it this way. So we have seen that deep tech's sweet spot, as we call it, often lies in being the bridge between the top line and the um, uh, revenue generation and the bottom line efficiencies. It's not about how, but usually the why and where 
AI or deep tech fits in the grand scheme of things. So our journey through the QSR in US, the fashion trend setters in the UK, Asia's banks, uh, showed us that the language of AI might differ, but its potential is universal. And it's super important to educate, guide, and create that ecosystem, including the right influencers, and create hyper-local solutions. So at Mylan, um, our journey in productizing, packaging this deep tech, especially our driver monitoring solution, Mickey, and the surface inspection solutions, et cetera, are examples of this adaptability to local conditions. And uh, as we look forward, we see AI as the catalyst for creating that user experience. And uh, hopefully, uh, with every deep tech innovation, we redefine the boundaries of possibility. And wishing all of you product managers, founders, all the very best in your journeys. Thank you. So thanks a lot, Mridul. That was very interesting to understand how the different uh, market research and market requirements and how we can fit them exactly, right? Like to before we launch the solution, something which is very important for a product management manager or the marketing teams to understand the go-to-market aspects of things. So thanks a lot, Mridul, for that Thank engaging you. discussion.